specially brought to you by Institute of Estate Agents Singapore. I am Clarence, your host tonight. To the audience, Philip Tan, COO, Oswell Group International, Australia, Marketing Director, Propnex Cambodia. He plays many roles in business and leadership. He is also president of Aus Asia Business Council and creator of Smart Investment, Mindset and Smart Mastery. He is qualified in real estate and business sales with full license certification from Australia. Philips also holds the position of COO of Oswell International Group in Melbourne, offering value services in property development and project marketing. He is also marketing director of Cambodia Propnex. In addition, in his career success, he is actively involved in the state of Victoria at his own current position, Regional Advisory Council under the Victorian Multicultural Commission. The RCA's role is to provide critical on the ground insights and potential solutions into issues such as migrants and refugee settlement, mental well being, youth education, and employment services, housing, citizenship, violence, family violence, and the recent business COVID recovery concern and initiative. Before I hand the mic over to Philip, let's watch a short video. Without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Philip Tan. Thank you, thank you, Clarence. Thank you for uh, putting on that video. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, wow, Philip, your your video is very interesting. Well, it's been uh, uh, my way of uh, showing the viewers tonight uh, how exciting Cambodia can be. Uh, yeah. I've been uh, moving around in Cambodia, I think, for more than uh, ten years. I would say, you know, Clarence. Yeah. yeah, can't wait to get back. Can't wait to yeah. get back. Sure, sure. Yeah. The show is yours now. Okay. Yeah, good day and uh, Jim Riso to all the viewers and my Cambodia friends. First and foremost, I'd like to extend my well wishes to the people of Singapore. Happy National Day. I know a little bit early, but this is a fitting moment for me to extend my best wishes to everyone. I share your joy and celebrate with you. For the past 15 years, I have been residing in Australia. So moving forward today, I truly appreciate IEA invitation and I hope I can add values to today's discussion on the hot topic of Cambodia's growth and with some experience in the investment knowledge and perhaps the viewers can have a better understanding of Cambodia. Okay, so the business of property has always been my passion and it gives me great uh, values and success as well as uh, a lot of uh, new friendship. 
Now today's video and sharing is, is does not meant to confuse or play down anyone uh, business interest in Australia or any other countries that they may have invested in. Okay, so I remained committed in advocating for the strong home ownership and capital appreciation of property in Australia. Now in 2020, as you know, uh, like uh, uh, this uh, COVID has actually descended upon us. Uh, the world is actually caught unprepared and clueless. The global pandemic and uh, a lot of country is not spare. Okay, and the world faces strong economic headwinds, challenges that we all need to stay safe and positive. But however, in 2021, we already crossed the half year mark and soon we'll ring in the new year and we are all adapting the new normality way of life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, agents and friends, as the world starts towards COVID recovery, you need to be resourceful in managing our wealth as we position our next financial growth. Now allow me to unlock the investment potential of Cambodia, power up your financial engine in growing your wealth, making your dollar work harder and smarter beyond 2021. Right? Is, that, is that a good thing to do, Clarence? Yes. Okay. okay. So now, uh, I, I, I will try to, uh, it's a lot to go through, so I'll do my best and yep. cover uh, a little bit more uh, quicker on what I want to explain. Uh, Cambodia, I'm very passionate about Cambodia, all right? So uh, in 2004, 2004, Cambodia actually joined the World WTO, okay? So tourism at that time was only 1 million. So pre-COVID at its peak is close to 6.5 million. And you know, there's another new airport coming out, the International Airport. It's going to be $1.5 million. It's going to be one of the world's biggest airport in the world, okay? So yes, uh, so this has marked, is, uh, with the WTO, it has marked its uh, milestone into bringing Cambodia accessions to the prosperity in terms of economic, social development, alongside other countries in Asia region and beyond. Now, Cambodia is highly open, accessible emerging market that has seen rapid economic growth transformation over the last two decades. Record GDP for the last two decades is around 7.5%. So this outstanding growth has consistently skyrocketed Cambodia into one of the fastest growing economy in the world. Developments from subsistence agriculture to market base, from high poverty rate to improving lower middle income country, driven by concentrated growth in government, textile, footwear sector, as well as the construction and tourism. Tourism is a big business eh, in Cambodia. Now, uh, the Cambodian competitive advantage, of course, it is low effective, uh, low cost, okay? They're so effective uh, for business people. Businessmen love it, all right? Young population, they love it there too. Plenty of uh, supply of uh, so-called available workforce. Uh, central location between Vietnam, Thailand, and uh, the preferential uh, tariff access which helps them to export to other parts of the world. Now, uh, I'd like to share some market insight uh, from the Australian government as well. So this is uh, to tell you that uh, how the Australian government also participate in uh, Cambodia's growth. Uh, this is a strike from the Department of Foreign Trade, Foreign Affairs and Trade, okay? So in the trade and investment opportunity, I would say that Australia assisting commercial interests in Cambodia are focused in educational services, food and beverages, financial, professional services, mining, resources, hospitality, and government sourcing. Now we all know that, right? So these are the few keys industry that uh, a lot of people are actually involved in right now, you know, business from uh, investor from around the region. Now Cambodia also uh, so far has avoided the worst of the COVID-19, okay, health crisis, and maintain most economic activity within minimum restriction. So this is a, a blessing, okay? Of course, everybody has to still be very careful and still have to put the mask on and distance social thing and so on and so forth and uh, follow the regulation of the uh, World Health uh, Authorities, all right? And uh, Australia is also the most popular English language educational destination for Cambodia students, okay? I'm the advisory for one of the uh, student association in Victoria. And the education service make up about 80% of Australia's service export to Cambodia with around 2,900 Cambodia currently enrolled in Australian education institution. I believe the numbers uh, will be even higher if it wasn't for the, uh, the COVID situation. Okay, so demand for quality education continue to increase with around 60% of the population under the age of 30 
enrollment rate in schools are improving and a growing middle income can afford private education. So this also tells you the growing wealth of the citizen of Cambodia having you know new uh, so-called newfound wealth. So Cambodia have relatively underexplored uh, mineral resources, right? And uh, the Cambodian government also demonstrate the strong support for the industry. We all heard about uh, discovering gold, you know, and now people are really mining for gold now. Huh? So Australia will invest in a new package of economic development and security measure, which include 232 million to support economic integration and development in the Mekong Basin region. Okay, so the Australian Development Corporation is supporting Cambodia to work towards overcoming this issue to ensuring a robust recovery from the COVID-19 economic crisis. So this is the focus on building economic resilience through promoting economic diversification and competitiveness, attracting quality investment, managing infrastructure development more strategically and promote economic opportunity. So uh, along that, of course, we also know, Clarence, that uh, Cambodia is a member of the ASEAN Economic Committee, and that is important. And also the World Trade Organization, uh, which helped them, okay, to be relatively open in their trading regime. So uh, the ASEAN is Australia's second largest trading partner as a bloc. And it's essentially essential to to uh, Australian economy recovery from the COVID nineteen pandemic. In two thousand nineteen and two thousand twenty, Australia trade with ASEAN countries was one hundred and thirteen point seven billion, okay, which is greater than the two way trade with Japan and United States. There you go, Clarence. You say, yeah, a lot of Philip. people are exciting about Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question for you, Philip. Thanks for sharing with your listeners on Australia's involvement with Cambodia. Uh, that is very positive to note, but I do know that you are knowledgeable about Cambodia. What is Cambodia that makes you so engaged with this country as your investment hot spot? Well, uh, as you know, many economists and, and financial experts okay, always anticipated the, the V-shaped recovery, especially in emerging economy. And in this context, I believe Cambodia will qualify. As earlier on, I mentioned some of the points there, you know, some of the points that are regarding the uh, so-called the industry, okay, uh, the World Trade Organizations from uh, 1 million uh, during the 2004, uh, when they joined World Trade Organization to increasing tourism and the world gets to know about Cambodia, of course. And then, uh, you know, the to building the, the gonna be the world biggest airport, uh, uh, one of the world's biggest airport. You know, worth about one point five million billion dollars. You know, there's a lot of money there. So these are all coming, and it's about forty percent completed, by the way. If you want to know, uh, so so the fact here is that I I feel very bullish, okay, Clarence, particularly about Cambodia, where the cost of business investment is still low, and uh, the COVID crisis did not really tarnish its shine. Eh? It's still going very well. So the strong business fundamental is so still in place to draw investors from the neighboring and distant country. So uh, if you look at Cambodia, there's always two words okay, that, that always pop up you know, in, in, my, in my observation and study. Uh, in my last talk, I, I highlight the two keywords, uh, uh, political stability and economic sustainability. And, but today I will add one more word, okay? I will just add one more word and hopefully that will cement my sharing that is uh, certainty. Okay, as the country grows, so will the government, I always say, okay, because the country, uh, once the country take off, okay, in terms of its prosperity and economy wealth, uh, the government will also need to uh, go along the way of creating a better system, better reform, better industrial reform to, to, to satisfy investor and, uh, and a better investment policy. So these are the things that uh, work together, you know with the proper equation uh, to make things work. So in, in the early years of 2010, okay, uh, I still remember when I set foot in the kingdom of Cambodia. And, uh, and after that, many visit follows. And uh, I, I have developed deep appreciation okay, with its people, its culture, and its country. And the ability to have deeper connection with Cambodia. The objective of my sharing, okay, let me cut short the learning curve, okay, so that you can actually take advantage of the current investment opportunity. After all, we are talking about investing into Cambodia tonight. Okay. Now, looking back some 35 years ago, if you ask me about investing overseas, I, I can tell you I have no clue at all. Okay, no clue. Well, back then, the world was not so well connected. You know what I mean? Traveling isn't cheap. Information flow slow. And news are so outdated sometimes. Huh? So many times we, 
either have no information or we are misinformed regarding the fact of happening. So today the possibility is going to improve with the digitalizations and digitalized world, connecting 5G and whatever you have. You know, the ability to real-time connect, empowering cross-border marketing through social media, VR zooming in and out of the world. As long as you have the smartphone, you are connected, digitally linked, and you will be good to go. And you will not miss any big things, okay? You will not miss it. You know, if you, but if you do not have it, you'll miss it big time, okay? So in fact, with the open, uh, well-connected network platform, which in proof speed eh, and productivity our 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 definitely opportunities you know don't pass bypass us so easily eh? we will actually get to see it very quickly and seize the, the opportunity so myself even uh, at the panic uh, situation in, in in the covid time i i engage in e-learning okay and uh, there's a lot of things to learn and uh, on the real estate as viewing on project especially uh, you know most of you guys will know it's through real-time vr platform sales are being made and even contract, you guys, e-contracts are being signed. So this is a new age reality of immense possibility, all right? Nothing seems impossible. However, as we take serious step into investing in overseas market, I wish to put in a simple question to all investors out there. Have you ever visited Cambodia? If you have not, then I think you must uh, before you invest, okay? Uh, let, let me illustrate how to identify this, this stability, all right? Uh, myself as a professional in this field, I exercise a grounded approach towards my investment interest and it has paid good dividends, okay, believe me, for, for many of my investors. Because seeing is believing, okay, they always say that. Huh? So trust me, Cambodia growth is so fast moving that it, it's literally on steroids, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the, the, the pool of us, us Asia and Cambodia has a growing population of over 16.3 million people. Okay, the capital city of Phnom Penh is about close to 3 million residents, taking up jobs and services, but powering the growth of the economy. Majority are low income in, in earners, you know, and enjoying better living conditions. So they, they appreciate what they have, you know. Of course, we all understand they have a very sad past, you know, I mean, very unfortunate, mis unfortunate. So you must like to know the constant robust economic growth has generated prosperity, okay, to so many and the wealthy has obviously become very wealthy. Uh, Cambodian business community of today received good education in management, forward thinking, hungry for growth, and I know many aspiring young executives have burning desire to be successful. And not to forget a stable and progressive government that enjoyed diplomatic cooperation and goodwill with many countries. Okay, so that's the reason why Cambodia is, you know, having such a robust growth, okay, for the last two decades. Now, this is, this is real, okay, my friend, you know, if we look back Singapore back then, when Lee Kuan Yew opened up the world and start bringing in the Taiwanese and the Japanese and the, and the German, you know, as you remember those days, you know, we used to have TV from German, right? <laughs> German, and, and, and this is what it is, and foreign direct investment, okay? So these are so important. So if you, if you go and see Cambodia, you will actually see a lot of things, okay? See a lot of things that you can connect with, uh, you know, uh, the, the growing stages of Singapore. So use that as a reflection. Uh, you know, since I'm talking in the context of with the Singapore audience here, uh, uh, use that as a as a point of reference. Okay, then you'll be able to see the significant uh, strength that you can actually trade off. You know, in, in understanding that very quickly. Now, uh, so once once you have visited Cambodia, you will have a strong sense of direction, and your bearing will quickly appreciate the investment opportunity and their potential. So earlier on, I mentioned about being internet savvy and the resourceful Google, of course, being one of the key of the world, you know, convenient unlock, you know, uh, available providing you all kind of information day and night. <laughs> but in general, investor often will search out on Cambodia. And I tell you sometimes it's a bit uh, not fair. I used the word not fair. You'll find that there are so there are story about the uh, 1967 to 1975 Cambodia Civil War. Okay, these are the, some of the stories that will pop up. So unfortunately, no one can change history, all right, Clarence? Years of suffering has crippled his people and his country. I, I, I feel for them. But I'm not here to sugarcoat the past happening or anything like that, all right? I, I'm not an expert on history. But maybe the Vietnam War, the Myanmar fight on human rights, or China-American trade war, or even the vaccine, which one is the best to use, and which one you want to put in your arm, I tell you. <laughs> Whatever it is, okay? In, in, in these few years, we can see there's a lot of positive news coming out in the region, 
Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, and whatever, Laos, even. There's a lot of positive news coming out, okay? So we just have to uh, pay attention to the positive news and do our own little uh, research and uh, perhaps uh, have a chat with uh, some people that really know the business there, okay? So I take the liberty to, to, to quote uh, His, uh, His Excellency uh, Ho Mani. Uh, I remember during the time we visited uh, John Hawking University, in his speech he say, let's not dwell in the past but also not forget the past. So how meaningful and profound are those words, huh? Challenge, okay? He's so so he's, he, he is an outstanding leader, okay? Uh, government official, of course, uh, he's, one, he's a son of uh, the Hun Sen, uh, uh, Prime Minister Hun Sen. So if you are a savvy investor and seeking growing opportunity in the financial growth, in any emerging economy in Asia, you sh will surely need to come to term, okay, with this history. You need to come to term with history, good or bad. That's it, okay? Because that is history. Right, Clarence? Right. But what we are looking at, we're looking at the future. Okay, if we keep on looking at history, we'll never turn the pages and therefore we'll never have a chance to move forward. Yeah. Okay, so I, I want to set you in the in the right frame of mind, okay, the audience uh, tonight. Uh, we, we all have to be on the same page. Then we can say, okay, now we can put this aside. Now let's focus and understand that we are living in current times and it's important that we are all on the same page. And, you know, like I say, you know, changing times uh, need changing minds. So hopefully <laughs> we are all on the same page, okay? So on the positive note, I personally think that we are on a new page of history. Uh, it's being written by Cambodian for Cambodia today. Yes. Okay, seriously. And that's, it's focused on the rebuilding of the country. So that's why you can see that if you visit Cambodia, you can see that there's so much uh, energy busting, you know? always on the go, always ready to help you, always ready to give you service, you know. So this is so important, all right. So with, with that, that understanding, uh, you you start to say, okay, now there are a lot of things you can do in Cambodia, that are, uh, especially the uh, farming industry, okay. Farming industry, IT services, these are things that uh, are, are, are supporting the growth of the country, okay. Uh, but do not do it on your own. Or just simply engage any local, you know, with a flashy calling cards, huh? over a cup of coffee. You you have to consult with the right people, all right, Clarence. And it pays, you know, they always say it pays to get result. Okay, one, one coffee doesn't pay, huh? <laughs> you gotta engage somebody seriously, you know, to, to do work for you, to help you, to, to guide you. To, to give you good service, okay? <laughs> Coffee doesn't pay, one lunch doesn't pay. <laughs> uh, so these are the things that we all have to understand. You know, they, they, they need us, we need them. So work together, <laughs> see the value and, and start to work together, all right? Yeah. So if you're, you're serious about financial wealth creation, okay? You, you have no option, all right, Clench? <laughs> you need to invest. So money sitting in the bank is not gonna, not gonna cut it or, or, you know, you're not gonna get a better return out there, correct? Huh? That's true. That's so true. Money is getting smaller. And it's too small, question, my friend. Yeah. Okay, another question in your personal experience and observation. And how would you say is in Cambodia in terms of political climax, stability, GDP, influx of FDI, economy growth, and risk of doing business? Wow. Um, risk does exist, okay? I, I, let me be upfront. Risk does exist, but if you understand risk, you, you can manage it better. All right? Yes. You, nobody is, is risk, risk uh, proof, okay? But there's no perfect country or perfect system, trust me. They, 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 there's no such thing. I always say system is created by men, but you have to be followed by men, okay? So don't, don't blame the system not working. You know, it's like it's a traffic light. If you cross the traffic light, you're in trouble, okay, when the light is red. So that is why you have to work with qualified professional. Okay, that's, that's number one. So uh, again, visit, go for a trip, spend some money, support the local travel, uh, tourism industry, have a talk to expert on the ground and people that are in the industry and who can, you'll be rewarded with good knowledge. For sure, okay, because the more you talk to, I still remember uh, 10 years, 11 years ago, uh, the first few trips, somebody will say that they know somebody and somebody will know somebody and somebody can give me advice to help me with something. You know, as, as I go more and more trips, people realize that I know more and more people ultimately the people that talk to me disappear. Why? Because they know I know people who knows their people. 
I don't know whether you understand what I mean or not, but it's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a change reaction, okay? Yeah. But in a good way, in a good way, okay? So, however, please, uh, are you ask as long as you ask the right question, right people, uh, but don't don't ask a fishmonger how to catch a fish, okay? Even though he's selling a fish, or the doctor which apartment to buy or which country to invest, he, he doesn't know that, you know. I mean, a doctor doesn't know all that thing, okay? So. Uh, in a in a political and economic climate, I would say that uh, if you want to look at it, I think many foreign firms uh, noted that Cambodia offer a stable economy and political environment. Uh, that's why uh, the country is growing so fast. And much appreciation is also shared on the uh, pro business attitude of the government. That one you must give it to them. They they are really mean it. You know they they are really uh, very uh, serious about growing the economy. And, and and the business committee consensus is that the government is committed, okay, to helping investor, domestic as well as foreigner, to make their business work. So this is something whereby uh, you can understand with a very open uh, government in terms of uh, helping investor. More investor will definitely feel more welcome, and they will work towards the the contribution of the country, isn't it? So the government also. Uh, or uh, have often uh, have dialogue. As you can see from my video, I visited the uh, investment uh, so-called association to have a little bit of uh, chit-chat understanding and have a bit of, uh, of, of a dialogue regarding uh, what investors like to do and how they can go about doing it. So that video uh, explained a lot of things, okay? Uh, I, uh, it's a bit lengthy, but uh, it covers all the important points uh, because I travel widely in Cambodia, not only the Phnom Penh city, but also Sihano View and uh, Kampok and uh, I deal with resource uh, minerals stuff like that as well and uh, selling of land and, and blah 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 you know so there's a, a bit of things to do there so but there's a there's a what we call you know the stability part comes in okay the economy stable part comes in because uh, the current foreign investment policy as you know that the foreign investment policy in Cambodia has been formulated to to meet challenges on the broad shift from century plan to market orientated economy all sectors are open okay to foreign investment except those related to national security all right you you, you obviously cannot touch that but there's no restriction uh, in, in general to place a foreign share or, or ownership i even help people to uh, to acquire casino license okay so so that, that is something whereby it used to be very popular okay so the kingdom of wonder has a very poor business government that's number one and the country also has a low cost base for setting up factory that's why you can see that uh, it, it has exported uh, quite a lot. Sometimes you go to the, the shopping center, you can find that their shirt is uh, made uh, by sea, which is actually Cambodia. <laughs> so this has attracted many foreign investment. The progress and wealth of the last decade is, uh, is visible, okay? In the changing skyline of Phnom Penh City. All right, so the Cambodian economy is uh, forecast to grow around 4% this year and maybe 5.5% in 2020. This is all uh, uh, projection by the uh, Asian Development Bank, okay? So it is not something that I cook up, okay? Because the economy recovery in major trading partners and uh, they definitely uh, will boost all this demand uh, for the uh, kingdom export. So this, this will be very impressive, okay? Recovery to the extent. But the other key element that we want to talk about here is also, uh, Clarence, is the Asian powerhouse. Now, the, the Association of Southeast Asian Nation, as you know, ASEAN, okay, uh, it was established in uh, 8 August 1967, and Cambodia joined in 1999, making up what is today, the, I think it's the 10 member state, right? So, ASEAN role is to promote active collaboration, mutual assistance on matters of common interest, economic, social, culture, technical, scientific, administrative field, as well as to accelerate the uh, regional economic growth. Now, having said all that, you ask yourself, this, this is a broad base. This is a broad base support, you know. There's a whole ecosystem in there, okay. So these are important, you know. It's like the, the, the bigger roles of ASEAN coming together to support each other for, for common benefit and common growth. So it's a collective nation that delivers a bigger market. When, when I travel in Southeast Asia, there's a, there's a sometime people ask me, he says, well, Philip, I see you jumping from one country to another, you know what I mean? Today you're here and tomorrow you're in Thailand and the next day you're in Vietnam and, uh, and the next, next, next afternoon I see you in Cambodia. They say, how, how, you know, how you manage to understand all these places? And I told them, uh, to me, the, the, the whole Southeast Asia region, all right, 
it is not not a country you know I, I can be in Cambodia this afternoon or or I can be in Bangkok uh, cha -cha -cha the next Saturday morning whatever it is at the end of the day Clarence this whole region to me is one single market one single market yes of course they have different culture and that but uh, however it's still one single market Okay, because we cannot possibly do everything in one country or invest everything in that country. We, we pick and choose which is best. So therefore, to me, uh, it's quite uh, comforting to, 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 to look at it this way, that the whole lot of the Southeast Asia region is one country. So one big market for me. So I love it. Okay, I love it. You know, Southeast Asia with a population of close to 650 million people. Uh, ASEAN is currently the third largest economy in the Indo-Pacific and had a combined GDP of close to $2.8 trillion. Okay, now this is of course, uh, ASEAN currently also have regional free trade arrangement with Australia, New Zealand, China, Japan, South Korea, India. So that's the reason why early on I bring Australia into the picture so that you can as you see that, uh, you know, uh, Australia is also participating in the collective effort of uh, a trade and a partnership, you know, with, with the region in Southeast Asia. Okay, and then this is this is important because it's believed that currently it's the fourth largest export market. Okay, and uh, uh, and soon enough in twenty fifty, it will become the the fourth. Okay, the, the the fourth largest economy in the world. So this is this is really something that to the force to take note. Okay, and it's ready to support the foreign investment with some economic and trade policy. Massive infrastructure development. These are the things that are joint government working framework ensuring the viable, you know, viable investment climate. There are some of the positive in moving forward and maintaining the progress of ASEAN. So that stability engine is so important. Okay, so important. You know who supported you for growth. Okay, who is participating in your growth? Okay, and, and the country has a young, ready workforce. They are able to communicate English, Chinese, and ready to take up jobs in factories and offices. And these are some of the plus points, you know, that uh, you can anchor the foreign investment firmly into Cambodia, right? You know, you know, it's how hard it is when uh, a company wants to set up factory and they don't have enough workers. So these are things that uh, Singapore has gone through before and we know how tough it is, okay? So it's a blessing. Cambodia has all that, plenty of that, and uh, it's uh, available. It's available, well-trained, knowledgeable. And these are the things that uh, the government is so open about doing business. And, they deliver, they deliver standard, and, I, and I'm very happy about that. So what do you think, eh, Clarence? <laughs> <laughs> very good. But okay, one more okay. question for you anyway. Okay, besides <laughs> properties, what other areas of possible investment do Cambodia has to offer? Uh, okay, so uh, if, if, if I were like Maybank, okay? You know, Maybank in 1993 is the first bank to actually enter into Cambodia. 1993, all right. I, I don't know what you're doing in 1993, but uh, definitely, uh, <laughs> if I know, I would have gone with Maybank to Cambodia. <laughs> so, so if it's not good, uh, then probably, you know, uh, Maybank would have gone home, you know what I mean? But uh, so if you look at all that, uh, the banking sector, of course, obviously uh, support a lot of uh, people who, who, are, who, who want to develop the country, right? So tourism, okay, tourism dollar is very important. So tourism is, a, is, a, is one of the biggest earner in Cambodia, you know, yeah, they used to have top earner and uh, giving its location in South Asia is also very booming, okay, because people go to neighboring uh, Thailand and so on and so forth, they do come across and cut into Cambodia because they are so close to each other huh? and, and Vietnam, right? So with tourism, uh, you can actually have uh, uh, the need for infrastructure development, it's very important, you know, hotels, route, uh, highway and so on and so forth, you know what I mean? And so this this helped uh, FDI, okay, investment. Like earlier on, we are talking about FDI, right? So, uh, of course, then again, if we are, you know, I got a friend uh, from Australia. Uh, he actually acquired a big scale of land for agriculture. So he's going cashew nut, you know, for export, you know? So, so to me, it's wow. And another guy that I know, he's actually have a mango plantation. Because mango is very uh, uh, popular, you know, it, it, for Cambodia as well, if Vietnam is, right? And, and Thailand, even, you know, mango salad and all that. So these are the things they, they, they love to do, you know. So there you go, you know, agriculture. 
All right, it's very good because land are cheap and uh, plenty of that, and uh, the, the the soil is very fertile, so you can do all that. Of course, uh, other than that, uh, there are new shopping center coming out. The Meg, uh, uh, Aeon Three, yeah, mega shopping mall. So these are the things that you can actually go in. You know, can do a retail business. But I also say that uh, mining, if you are if you have the money and you have the resource, uh, mining is also very good. Uh, additional, the government has uh, has implemented a policy that aim at attracting foreign direct investment into this area. Uh, they they even have a tax incentive, all right, for people who want to go into big industry like mining. Okay, so uh, but the government also set up what they call the Council for Development (CDC). Okay, it's a one-stop uh, facilitator for foreigners and local investor. So this this government has say regard itself as a partner, okay, of the private sector, not as a competitor. So, so in a general strategy to support the development of a private sector uh, as the prime motive force in achieving the economic growth and providing the, the underpin of sustained uh, poverty reduction. So they, 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 you know, they work very hard okay, to so-called, in a way, uh, slowly, slowly move it to middle income uh, uh, status okay so these are these are the things that Cambodia is looking for looking out for these people and the government also not only interested in to work with China they also have trading partners uh, in a lot of people like the, the Australia US Japan Korea Singapore and this have enjoying a very strong relationship and uh, it's well cemented with uh, Cambodia so if we are going into this business of hotel hospitality restaurant business these are good business you know mining like I mentioned agriculture tourism now uh, tourism sometimes we only talk about Angkor Wat you know oh they only have Angkor Wat you know or, or, or maybe it's some uh, royal temple or that but actually it's not true they have much much more uh, I believe there's a, a lot of uh, hidden treasure in in the forest you know because it's very densely popular uh, forest you know uh, in Cambodia isn't it so I was told you know uh, some of my friends that say they even have so much uh, 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 undiscovered treasure you know in the forest so who knows so with uh, further growth of the country, we will see more discovery and there will be more exciting tourism uh, uh, spot, you know. Yeah, Simrip. Yeah, Simrip is a good place. Uh, Simrip, if you're in Simrip, uh, it's a good place to invest as well. Okay, uh, early on you see the pictures that I show you is uh, Kampok. Kampok is good. Kampok is actually uh, used to be a, a French occupation. Yeah, French used to occupy the area. The French, uh, and then uh, they are sea salt. Yeah, you can... Uh, Seesaw farming, that's good as well. <laughs> I even helped an investor once, all right, Clarence, to acquire a mountain. Okay, granite. Okay, because these are commodities, you know what I mean? Yeah, because Cambodia is growing so fast. You need all that. You need granite, you need cement, you need bricks, you need wood, you know, you need all that, right? So today, as you know, today, uh, the, the, the building material, there's no stock. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's really, really, really in big demand now. Okay, so there's a lot of things that we can look at. Okay. <laughs> but whatever it is, okay, you, if, if you are the, one, the first one who move in, then obviously the opportunity is available to you, is plenty. And uh, with the right people and the professionals to support your interests, you, know, you can do it. You look at Dubai, you know, Dubai in those days, you know, it's, it's, it's desert, right? Yes. What, what makes people go to Dubai and build Dubai? You tell me why. You know, not because, uh, not because they like the Arab or they like the, the, the sand, no because of the policy the policy that is the encouraging the the investment climate is good the pro business government you know what i mean yes. welcome uh, people to come and uh, build the economy so this is the same facts that can actually happen you know almost the same pattern all right but this time we're talking about cambodia so it is so i do encourage even ladies okay i encourage ladies to go in to, to give it a go venture you know because there's a lot of successful uh, cambodian uh, business lady that i know they are very successful they are they are actually the one of the engine you know for growth you know they are, they are leaders you know in, in the areas of uh, economy and a very entrepreneurial spirit so perhaps some singapore uh, business lady might, might want to go in and uh, do some partnership you know uh, as you know one of our speaker ng is you know she ventured into cambodia <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Philip Tan, for a wonderful insight yes. of Cambodia market. Uh, in Cambodia, is a big country. Uh, are there weakness or weaknesses in legislation and enforcement surrounding property development? 
Are there any uh, weakness there? Uh, whether some developer will operate with little transparency or accountability uh, so that as a buyer, I need to do my due diligence. Uh, but who actually go and look after in terms of legislation and enforcement for these property developers? Uh, Philip, you want to take the question? I was looking at Philip. <laughs> well, uh, I think Angie has been answering all the questions pretty well. <laughs> well, earlier on, I mentioned that uh, there is such a department called the CDC, right? Mm. So CDC actually is a very important uh, a policing body in a way, huh? if you want to call it. Uh, so they, they, they look after, before you can get licensed to operate, okay, you have to, of course, get approval from the CDC as well, okay? Uh, then if you even, uh, what Angie was talking about, the special economy zone, even that, if, if for you to enjoy the incentive or tax benefit or whatsoever uh, a government uh, so-called uh, offers to you for foreign direct investment, you also have to qualify that under the CDC arrangement, okay? So that is a body looking at it. And the last uh, so-called uh, incident in uh, Sihano view, you know, which is very unfortunate. This uh, actually is a, is a welcoming thing in a way. Of course, uh, it's unfortunate that the lives are being lost. Uh, but it is important to set this into its uh, right perspective of understanding that regulation has to come in. So there are a lot of reforms, okay, that need to be achieved in a, in a legal and uh, juridical reform. Foreign investment are obviously are very convinced, you know, that the, the royal government uh, are committed to this reform process itself. So the country's commitment to market economy is, is, is definitely there for sure, Jeff. Uh, so will there be a, somebody that look after all these things? Yes, of course they will be, okay. So uh, the, the detail, I'm not too sure which department actually handles that, all right? Uh, so, but however, uh, there is such a body being looked into that, okay? But uh, one of the main thing is that you must know that CDC is very serious about all these things, okay? And they are the uh, so-called authority in, in, in the whole investment uh, aspect of uh, people coming in, you know? They, they're not about to let you ruin uh, Cambodia's goodwill, that I can assure you. <laughs> Uh, maybe another question for Philip. Uh, I understand in Cambodia, they also have uh, construction contractors who are local, contractors who are foreigner. They also got uh, construction materials that are done that are local and they are also uh, imported materials from different uh, uh, construction uh, company. So so it's, it's quite a big picture you know if you look at construction you look after the cost you have to look after the material then you have to look about expertise whether it's local contractor or foreign contractor so yes if i look at the big picture uh cambodia is very pro business but i also worry about the risk involved well i think you're so right you know uh, jeff uh, like i say you know uh, which country don't have risk System is created by people. It has to be followed by people. Government is also people. Business people is also people. So at the end of the day, uh, what we we must understand is if we want to go and buy a, a apartment, that's for example, right? Why some apartment have thirteen awards and others have none? You ask yourself this question. Okay, if I'm an investor, if I want to buy uh, a, into an apartment or into a commercial office. First question I ask myself, who is the developer? Okay, because the developer itself is the start of everything. From the designing, architecture, planning, everything, so on and so forth. They must have what NG say, the proper paperwork. If they don't have the proper paperwork, then why are we worrying about where the door come from or where the floor is made in? I think that's, that's irrelevant to, to me to that extent. Okay, because we are investors and we are coming into this country to, to benefit from its growth. And also we are seeking opportunity to stretch our dollar a little bit longer, you know, so that we can make some money. And, and, and that, that is being uh, practical about how we approach this market. Okay. Uh, if, if we ask ourselves that we are not confident, okay, about this development, then obviously, you know, uh, you can set second opinion. 
you can actually ask a, a, a private surveyor okay there's a lot of architecture firm in there international architecture firm surveyor firm uh, I know some developer they use international surveyor because they don't believe in themselves doing it so they want a third party who comes in to qualify okay so these are the standard that is fast becoming the normal standard okay so it's not not because that uh, Cambodia is a is a green economy or, or developing economy they are not uh, concerned about this it is not so much whether Cambodia is concerned it is the interest of the international market Cambodia thrives on the growth and support of the international market correct so therefore why I say that Cambodia itself plus the rest of the region to me is one big market it's not one country collectively they pull the 600 million people you know the they they, they work correct the, the, the uh, amount of resource and interest from the rest of the region if I have a crystal ball you know I, I, will, I will obviously <laughs> or I listen to a lot of IEA talk or whatsoever <laughs> I'll be very fortunate to understand the, you know, the point that actually point to which direction of the growth, you know, and quickly jump into it, right? So, but you know, Cambodia is rapidly changing, you know, as a society, and but they re also represent a lot of opportunities for prudent investor. Tourism is being one of them. You know, we go and have a holiday, we live in good hotel, and we can appreciate that, huh? mm. and it's not very expensive anyway. But more international brands are coming, okay, as we as we speak. So think about it. If today. The Cambodia has such a good opportunity to invest then I guess the window opportunity is open to you and the rest of the world so we are going in investing to this country we obviously will ask intelligent question whereby they have to give us the right answer before we can put the money correct so this is not a speculation or this is not forcing somebody to do something that we do not want so uh, why we are talking about investment in Cambodia because too many times they talk about Cambodia as a country that is growing fast but people tend to confuse themselves how to approach this market what is the thing that I mentioned about stability the economy stability the sustainability of the government you know these are very important Cambodia's government will, 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 will have great vision if they don't have great vision we do not have what they call the diamond island which is called Copic, you know, the, the reclaimed land, huh, NG, you know yes. what I mean? We will, not have, we will not see all that. And that is almost like Singapore Fulton area, Marina Square area. How beautiful it is, right? Very well, so very well planned. Exactly, it's all prime location. If they can think of something like that, what is uh, licensing and all that? Don't forget, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, co-share values between Singapore, Malaysia, you know, uh, people in the administration, people in the, in the government, you know, helping each other to legislate new policy. Of course, uh, you know, working towards their culture and, and, and local condition, right? You know, to, to make sure that it is up to that, uh, what we call uh, BCA, you know, Building Construction Authority in Singapore, you know, I still remember that. Huh? I think it still exists, BCA standard, you know. Right? So I think, Jeff, that, 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 that is, that's how the, the region is moving itself into. Okay, because it's, it's so close, you know, everybody know each other, you know, and, and they, they want to, everybody to conform to the same standard in order to, to stay relevant. That's, that's how I see it. I hope yeah, I answered uh, the question, right? <laughs> yep. I think, uh, Philip, there's a question for you. Uh, is that what prospects okay. are there for estate management practices in PP, Phnom Pen? Does Propnex Cambodia provide such services currently? And if not, why? Well, I, I, I think it's too early to say whether Protonex provides such service or not. But I personally, uh, from Australia point of view, I understand that uh, even Australia, you know, we look at uh, property management as a very important thing. Okay. A lot of people used to say, when you own strata title in an apartment, what do you own? Do you, you don't own the land? You, you own, what do you own? You own airspace. Airspace. That's what it is, right? Everybody get to know. Eh? So how to put illustration on airspace? What is airspace? So this is a, a, a new thing, a very new thing, but it's such, becoming such an important thing. So uh, property management, uh, yes, I would say that uh, if, if, if you look at just only um, renting, leasing, 
that's also a form of property management. But if you're looking into body corporation, you know, really managing the whole estate, then that, that requires a, a certain standard. Uh, I, I would like to see, okay, I would like to see before all these things take off, there's proper uh, set of uh, standard educational uh, 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 syllabus that can actually uh, bring everybody together on the same page and so that there's some form of strong accountability. I think that's important because you know, legislation cannot be enforced unless there is a strong set of accountability and, and standard. So perhaps uh, that will be a, a not for me to answer, but I would like to see it moving forward towards the, the, the kind of, uh, of uh, high value services. And then Pronext Cambodia obviously can deliver that, you know, uh, when the time comes, if, if there's a market for that. <laughs> that's that's a, an, another day question for somebody much higher than me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just is there any more question for the speakers? No, I have nothing. I mean, it's, it's not about FOMO, okay, fear of losing out, you know, don't get me wrong, okay. Uh, the whole region is moving very fast, okay, and uh, we know that. Uh, opportunity does exist in Cambodia because if we are talking about it today it's because we felt the strength of this country growing we did not talk about it because we got no topic to talk <laughs> we talk about it because we recognize the strength of this country yes so it has been decades it's going to be the tiger of uh, Asia tomorrow that's why it's uh, yes. very interesting and I like to add that uh, Philip has been my mentor for many years uh, he's the one who get me onto the overseas uh, uh, investment. Uh, my first investment was uh, um, actually guided by him into Melbourne, into Australia. So I thanks Philip for all the support and all the guidance all this year. Uh, very glad to have you as my mentor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, Angie. Uh, thank you very much. So, so, so it's not about FOMO, okay, guys. Uh, you know, uh, you could stand the profit, you know, if you venture, okay. Uh, but if you do nothing, then you almost like history, you know. You know, yeah. remember our forefathers used to say, "If I only know, I will buy the whole orchard route." <laughs> so perhaps to invest in Singapore, this could be an opportunity for you to have a look at it, you know. And uh, when uh, and uh, when the opportunity comes, do come and visit Cambodia. And, uh, it's a very good see. country, um, uh, Philip. I see what you see. Okay, this is yes. a very good uh, place to invest. It uh, exactly uh, in uh, reflects nineteen nineties of Singapore. So of the yes. fast growing and there is a vast opportunity at a very low entry today. I am saying today, but tomorrow exactly. I cannot exactly. promise that the price will be the same. <laughs> No, I, 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 I've been there for the last 10 years, you know, I mean, so I, I've seen a lot and I've seen uh, how this country takes shapes, you know, it's not empty promises, it's happening, it's really, you know, in front of me. So perhaps that is uh, what I say, you know, my last word to, to the whole program here is perhaps that's called certainty. There is a, some form of certainty. Okay. You know, people say the best time to invest was yesterday, but is there certainty yesterday? I'm not too sure too. But perhaps today, there's more certainty, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, thanks for 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 inviting me to the show. Thank you. So don't end up knowing less than what your customer knows. <laughs> so it's important for you to to know. Just like just like Angie, Angie uh, was a student of mine. Yes. She 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 already uh, got certification and vaccination. Actually, important for agents. All right, to get yourself certified. Never mind if you're not selling foreign properties tomorrow. You, it's a skill set that you have to acquire and learn. Of course, we cannot have that type of experience like Philip. All right, 12 years experience. We really have to go and uh, <laughs> make a lot of coffee and tea and lunch to learn a lot of things from him. Because experience is something that you don't learn from your books. All right, the books can't teach you. You need just like some people say you you're smart, but you need to be street smart. So okay. for sure, I I do appreciate uh, all these years of traveling in Cambodia. You know the uh, I must say uh, uh, to all my friends in Cambodia and, and supporter that has taught me so much. You know in, in my journey, they they are truly uh, very uh, so called very loving people, very friendly people, and and they mean well. You know, with limitation and uh, but they see the country as great possibility. 
So I, I, I truly enjoyed that, that, that experience and also the support, the, the, the knowledge, the knowledge that I gained, you know, Jeff, you know, and, and Clarence and Angie. So, yeah, so we, we try our best, you know, to, to support each other. So I think this, this is uh, definitely the country of wonders, <laughs> you know, and uh, I think it's, it's worth uh, betting on it. <laughs> yeah. What is the prospect of uh, in the future for property man management? There are always opportunities. Oh, big prospect, you know, Jeff, very big. You know, you, 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 can't, you can't build uh, and, and keep on building if nobody manage it. You know, property management is the way to ensure and prolong the value of your asset. As simple as that. Okay, you, you, you're bound to have repair, you're bound to have, you know, cracking uh, wall, you're bound to have peeling pain. This is a part and parcel, right? But it, it does not mean that you're losing money. You're actually enhancing your asset, okay, right? So by enhancing your asset, uh, you know, if you buy the right property, you definitely is going to grow because the, the price you're buying today is very affordable. You know what Angie tell you? He can't promise you what the future price will be. I can tell you the same thing. You know, I will encourage people who are, you know, want to do business, you know, even the ladies that I mentioned, you know, we need more, more ladies in business, you know, who wants to enter into Cambodia, please do so, it's very safe. Language wise, it's not an issue. English, Mandarin, it's all both uh, equally good. The young Cambodian returning from overseas, uh, they will provide the uh, so called middle management uh, support as well as uh, even senior management support, too. So these are great uh, resources coming in because they are all well trained, you know, I mean, to support their, the future growth of Cambodia. And in, in, in that aspect, uh, commercial office, okay. Uh, I, I encourage you to look at commercial office, okay, secure some commercial office, a great one, especially in good location. So investor think about that for long term growth. Okay, because these are something that can uh, appreciate in terms of uh, asset appreciation in long term. All right. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank, you, night. Good night. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.